Hello all. Uh, now we'll see how will you do a first aid management for a patient with a suspected snake bite. We'll have two scenarios first. One thing is that what all first aid is the right first aid that you have to do at the site. And when the patient reaches the hospital, what are the things that needed to be done? So first we'll see, you always you remember that when you are on the field, there is a simple mnemonic that you can remember that is something called as do it right. It stands for, R stands for reassuring the victim. You reassure the victim stating that everything is going to be fine. We will take you to the hospital and there is anti-snake venom available for your treatment. So, uh, need not worry, we will take care of you. You reassure the victim because that is a priority number one that you need to do. Then get to hospital. Immediately you take him to a hospital where you have a facility for the uh, treatment of a snake bite. That there should be availability of the anti-snake venom. So, when you are practicing, you should be knowing that which all hospitals will have the facility of anti-snake venom availability. So, that is the next thing. Get to hospital and tell the doctor regarding the symptoms. So, these are the major things. And one most important thing that I missed is I. That is, a immobilize the bitten limb. So, immobilizing the bitten limb. So, R stands for reassuring the victim. I to immobilize the uh, bitten limb. Get to hospital and tell the doctors regarding the signs and symptoms. That is what is do it right. Now, uh, coming to the immobilization of the bitten limb. There are a lot of controversies in it. What is the correct method that need to be done? Whatever be the thing that you need to remember that, that limb should be immobilized. That is our priority and whether to apply tourniquet or not whether to apply a snake stone all those things controversies we are not going to touch what needed to be done is that what we are going to see we have something like for example if the patient has a snake bite uh, over here over the angle that will be the most common side where you will see the first thing that you can do is that you can just remove all the tight clothings whatever he has and if available you can have something like a splint like this or you have a wooden board or whatever is available you can just keep it beneath it and you can take a roller bandage ideally with a crepe bandage or whatever clothing that is available for example the bite mark is here so what is the ideal thing is that you need to start tying it above the bite mark and you can apply it this way that is one method when you have a splint so the limb will be immobilized if for example you don't get a splint like this so same thing you can apply the crepe bandage above the bitten mark and the next question arises is how tight you should apply this usually when you have a sprain or anything we'll pretend to tight it more tightly but in a snake bite victim what we are trying to do is that we need to just occlude the initial lymphatics so when you are trying you should be easily able to insinuate one finger in between that. So that should be the tightness by which you should be applying this crepe bandage. Or if you don't have a crepe bandage, you can go with the normal clothing, but no tourniquet. So what is the problem with the tourniquet? That when you apply a tourniquet, the distal blood supply is cut off and there is going to be a lot of edema. When the patient is going to come to the hospital, he will have a lot of edema and you will not be able to differentiate whether it is due to the tourniquet or it due to the bite mark. And the next thing is that once he reaches the hospital, when you release the tourniquet, there can be sudden gush of venom into the bloodstream and the patient can suddenly deteriorate. So, uh, if somebody is already in a tourniquet, somebody has mismanaged the initial phase and he is coming to your emergency room, that can be another scenario. So, at that point of time, he, there will not be any crepe bandage. For example, there is a tight tourniquet. So, what you can do is that you can have our normal BP cuff or normal BP apparatus you will have. So, you can just inflate that BP cuff over the bite mark. Maybe you can just above the systolic blood pressure. Maybe if the BP is 140, you maybe can keep it around 150 and you slowly deflate it and remove the BP cuff. So, suddenly when you release the tourniquet, what will happen is that there can be sudden gush of venom and the patient can deteriorate faster. So, that is the initial management. So, we have discussed regarding the first aid, what you need to do at the site, that is reassure the victim, immobilize the bitten limb, get to hospital and tell the doctor what are the signs and symptoms. Now, coming to the signs and symptoms, you can have varying signs and symptoms. You can start with, you can remove this. You can remove this, Dinesh. Uh, we can have varying signs and symptoms starting from a systemic effect and local effect. So, basically in India, there are two types of snakes that are commonly envenomate. One is the neurotoxic and other is the hemotoxic and third one can be a combination of neurotoxicity and hemotoxicity. So when you discuss the common neurotoxic snakes, you need to remember that the common neurotoxic snakes are Indian cobra, common crate 
and hemotoxic snakes are Russell's viper, Humbnose pit viper and so scale viper. So the, that is the, actually the big five. So whatever the anti snake venom, what we called as the polyvalent anti snake venom available in India will neutralize only the big four. That is the Indian cobra, common crane, Russell's viper and saw scale viper. The venom of the humnose fit viper it will not be neutralized with the polyvalent anti snake venom. We will discuss that in a uh, uh, within some time. Now the patient has come to the hospital. As I told in the previous session of anaphylaxis, uh, one thing that you need to make sure that your emergency room should be prepared enough to receive the patient. That means your crash cart should be ready, all your airway equipment should be kept ready and there are certain other things that you need to keep ready when you are getting a patient with a suspected snake bite. So one most important thing that you need to remember is that you need to have a clean glass container for doing our 20 minutes whole blood clotting time. It should be an ideally a glass container, it should be kept ready. I will show you how to do. And this is an another equipment, what we will call as a point of care PTINR. Point of care means you can do a bedside testing. So point of care PTINR is one of the important thing that if it is available, it is well and good. So we have an apparatus, so that's why we have kept a point of care PTINR in our department. And you should make available the anti-snake venom. So as I told, anti-snake venom, we can uh, maybe, I uh, will just put a, put a photograph of this. You can see that it will neutralize the venom of four common Indian snakes that is the common cobra, uh, Indian cobra, uh, common crate, uh, Russell's viper and soft scale viper. So once the patient has reached the emergency room and he is in front of you, as in case of any emergency you have to take care of his airway, breathing, circulation and your vital sign parameters has to be monitored. One important vital parameter that you can add is called as something called as single breath count. So what is a single breath count? You will take your blood pressure, you will take your heart rate, you will take the saturation. But one test that you need to add on is a single breath count. That is to understand the respiratory reserve of the patient. If the patient is having a neurotoxic envenomation, he can go for a respiratory paralysis. So when you have a single breath count being done, you will know that how bad is the patient getting affected. So once you do a single breath count, you need to repeat it every 15 to 20 minutes. Just I will show you how to do a single breath count. Shinoj. Can you just lift up? Maybe we can do it at lying down position also. But I am uh, making him to sit up so that you will be able to see it better. Remove the mask. Count from 1 to 30 in a single breath. Okay. Take a deep inspiration and count from 1 to 30. Just count. Loudly. Loudly count. Count, count. 1, mm. 2, three. So this is not the right method. Just I will show you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. Normally, a patient will be able to count up till 30. That is a normal average. So, a single reading is not sufficient. You need to repeat it every uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So, for example, the single breath count is 30 right now. Maybe after 15 minutes, it has come down to 25. What does that mean? His respiratory reserve has come down. So, he is going for an probable impending respiratory failure. So, after 30 minutes, he has come down to 20. Definitely, he is going for an impending uh, respiratory failure. So, that is the initial additional vital parameter that you need to take in. Now, the patient is here. You have taken the history. You have seen for any of the bite mark. You have examined the bite mark. You can see a classical fang mark is what is called as two small dots that will be seen around 0.5 centimeter apart. So that is a classical fang marks. So you can have your local examination and your systemic examination. We will start with the local examination. In local examination, you, you should be able to see a fang mark, usually in a poisonous snake, but you will be able to see. But in case of a crate bite, you might not be seeing any fang marks because it's needles, the fangs are just like a hypodermic needle. So you will not have any local reaction. So that is the thing. You will not be able to see a fang mark in a crate bite, but in other cases, you will be able to see a fang mark. As I told, it will be two dots separated around 0.5 centimeter apart. So, once you see the fang mark, you can presume that it can be a snake bite envenomation. It is a poisonous snake which has bitten the patient. That is one thing. Or sometimes it can be a dry bite also. Usually, when it is a non venomous snake bite, usually you will see some scratch marks. You will not be seeing the clear fang marks, it will be just a sc scratch marks. So, that is something that you can differentiate by seeing the fangs of the patient. The next important examination that you need to do is that you have to look for any blister formation, any swelling of the bitter, uh, bitter limb. And most important thing is that you need to look in for any localized lymphadenopathy. For example, in the lower limb, you need to look for your inquinal lymphadenopathy. As I told initially, the initial spread of the venom is via the lymphatics. So when you have a lymphadenopathy, uh, lymphadeno 
lymphadenopathy in the local region that means this patient is having a probable sign of envenomation so that is again one of the major sign of indication to start your anti snake venom so you have examined the local site you have looked for any bleeding blisters anything and you have done your localized lymphadenopathy and if you have available a tape is available with you you can just measure the circumference of the limb and maybe after one hour you can see how the swelling has increased so again rapidly increasing swelling that is again a sign of rapid spread of the venom and also if it is in the lower limb there is a high chance that the patient will go into something called as a compartment syndrome so you don't want that to happen if a compartment syndrome develop you need to take in for the patient for a fasciotomy so that is the local examination now coming to the systemic examination i will be just dealing the common uh, findings that you will see in a snake bite the most important if you have a neurotoxic envenomation the patient will be complaining of a diplopia the patient will have double vision and there can be ptosis also so so these are the things that you can see there can be ptosis and the patient can complain diplopia and later on as i told the uh, respiratory muscle will start getting fatigue and the respiratory reserve will come now so that will be the next finding that you will see so rest when you see at the hemotoxic envenomation maybe you can have some conjunctival hemorrhage most important one the first thing to start will be bleeding from the injection site you have taken put an iv line or maybe you have taken a blood drawn sample from that area the patient will start oozing the blood before you will have a subconjunctival hemorrhage or bleeding into the gums or anything the patient will start having bleeding from the injection site or even from the bite site so these are the two things that you need to remember you have hemotoxic you have neurotoxic and what are the local signs that you need to look you have to look for systemic envenomation now we have to decide whether the patient is needed any anti snake venom or not as i told before the most important investigation that you need to do is something called as 20 minutes whole blood clotting time so what you need to do in here when you have in a peripheral setup where you don't have any facilities of doing your pti ana what you can do is that you can take a clean glass container like this and you can keep two to three fresh blood fresh whole blood and keep it undisturbed for 20 minutes so you should not be disturbing it the classical clotting time what we learn we will be shaking it shaking it and see whether the blood is getting clotted but in a 20 minutes wbct you are not going to shake it you are just keeping it undisturbed for 20 minutes so what will happen after 20 minutes if the blood has get clotted that means the patient coagulation factors are okay and if the blood is not getting clotted that means the patient has gone into disseminated intravascular coagulation or hypofibrinogenemia that's what so that is again one of the sign where you need to start your anti snake venom so that is the one investigation that you need to do and if you as i told if you have a pti ana like this if you have a point of care pti ana like this that is excellent but if you don't have that facility at least go with your uh, 20 minutes wbct or even you can send a sample to the lab also because the advantage of pti ana is that even 20 to 30 percentage of the clotting factors are deranged the your pti ana will be elevated and the whole blood clotting time will take at least 50 percentage of your clotting factor to get deranged so we have a pti ana that is very good so we can detect early so now the rest investigations like complete blood count to look for any platelet drop thrombocytopenia a urine routine for looking for any evidence of hematuria then uh, renal function test creatinine kinase potassium very important electrolyte that you need to look in for the especially in hemotoxic snake venomination the patient can go in for kidney injury so that is the next investigation that you need to do so these are the investigation part now we will see what are the indication to start an anti snake venom as i told there are certain indication to start there can be local indication and there can be systemic indication whenever you have any systemic manifestations that is the patient is complaining of double vision or the patient is having a low sing uh, single breath count or the patient is having impending weakness again that is one of the indications to start your anti snake venom or any bleeding from your sites or the patient is having a rapidly increasing swelling again that is one of the indication now again if the 20 minutes wbct is positive or your pti nr is positive you need to start your anti snake venom now the question arises what are the local signs to start anti snake venom for example as i told the bite is here if there is a rapidly increasing swelling within half an hour the swelling has extended the whole limb yes you need to start your anti snake venom and if the patient is having a lymphadenopathy yes again you need to start your anti snake venom so these are the indication to start your anti snake venom now how will you dilute everything you need to uh, there are two preparations that is available what is available here is a freeze dried powder you can see it's a freeze dried powder so we need to reconstitute with this there is an uh, still water available in the uh, medical uh, in the container so we need to uh, 
reconstitute it and this will be around 10 ml so once you reconstitute it will be 10 ml on an average you need to start approximately 6 to 10 vials of anti snake venom i am not going into the details of uh, the dosage and all because it's again time consuming so you need to start at least around 5 to 10 vials you need to start at a speed of 1 to 10 ml per minute 1 to 10 uh, 1 to 2 ml per minute to correct 1 to 2 ml per minute that is the dose of your anti snake venom and there is no need of test dose that is one thing that i need to ensure is that there is no need of any test dose so you have decided to give your anti snake venom no test dose you start at a speed of 1 to 2 ml per minute you can give some uh, anti allergic medication if the patient is have higher risk of anaphylaxis if you can give a dose of adrenaline prior to uh, giving your uh, anti snake venom or you can give hydrocortisone or chlorpheniramine malleate or if the patient develop anaphylaxis you just treat like anaphylaxis whatever we have discussed uh, in the previous video so uh, that's what regarding the anti snake venom so once you decide to giving anti snake venom you give continuously the anti snake venom around 6 to 10 vials to start with so that will be the protocol and there are certain other things that you need to remember is that all the patients should receive a tetanus prophylaxis and all of them should be receiving irrespective of the bite whether it's a poisonous or a non-poisonous snake bite they should receive an antibiotic to coverage the gram positive maybe a pencil is more than enough amoxicillin clavulanic acid is more than enough to start with or a crystalline pencil or a doxycycline is more than enough to start with so that is the most important thing and remember that keep the patient under your observation for minimum 24 hours even if the patient is not having any signs of envenomation you advise them to be in the hospital for minimum 24 hours and you observe them then only you discharge even there is no signs of envenomation it is mandatory that the patient should be in hospital for 24 hours and as i told look for any evidence of compartment syndrome if the patient is going for renal failure again you need to start with your uh, uh, dialysis and if the patient has got uh, bleeding manifestation again your blood products like fresh frozen plasma platelets fresh blood all those things you can give and if the patient is having a neurotoxic envenomation you can add on with atropin and neostigmin because basically what is happening it is a neuromuscular receptor just like in myasthenia gravis the venom is going and binding the receptors and acetylcholine receptors is getting affected just like in myasthenia gravis you can give your neostigmin why we are giving atropine is to prevent the bradycardia so to conclude that you remember to do it right reassure the victim immobilize the bitter limb get to hospital tell the doctor regarding the signs and symptoms and once the patient reaches the hospital as i told airway breathing circulation is a priority add on to remember the complete uh, a single breath count how frequently you need to do 15 to 20 minutes and you have a local and systemic examination and you start regarding the indications of anti snake venom thank you